Hey guys, welcome back. So today we're in studio with Jason. How you doing? Hey guys. And we're going to talk about, um, what are we going to talk about today? <laughs> this is interesting. This one's an interesting I, one. I, I, it is interesting because I, I kind of hate it, but we're talking about smart guns. Smart guns. We live in the age of AI. We do. And look, when I was a kid, I remember reading guns and ammo magazines and they had smart guns back then they were revolvers and you would wear a ring that was magnetic oh my god i remember I, this i, I kid you not yes and there was a little mechanism placed into the grip of the pistol and the magnet would pull the bar away and allow the trigger to operate and then when you let go of the gun the gun was rendered inoperable without that magnetic ring gun didn't work and i'm sure there are other variations of that as well but that's the one that sticks in my noodle mm -hmm. right because i remember that as if it were yesterday and i was yep. like wow this is crazy what happens if you don't have your ring what if the the magnet loses its power what if you don't grip it just right and it doesn't the magnet's not pulling that little bar the right direction all these things with them and they, they didn't take off they didn't do well right because they did have problems, but that was a mechanical solution. All right. Fast forward to 2023, and now we're looking at actual smart guns that have little mini computers in them that do facial recognition, do fingerprint recognition, thermal printing, perhaps. Mm -hmm. I mean, all these different technologies to identify you as a unique person and to render the gun inoperable if you're not the one holding it. All right. And boy, the Second Amendment community is up in arms over this. Right. And and it's interesting because there was other versions similar to this, you know, other that ring one sticks out in your head. But I remember there was like a smart gun where you had like a bracelet that would communicate with the gun. And oh, yeah, like RFID. It. Yeah, yeah. Right. RFID or something like that. And then the, there was a few other ones. And, I, you know, forgive me, I don't remember the, the names of them. But the one that we're talking about specifically today in 2023 is mm -hmm. the new one. I'm sure you guys have seen videos popping about is that new like BioFire, I think mm -hmm. it is which has like, like you said, a little camera for facial recognition. It has all this, you know, fingerprint, all this stuff built into it. And it, it's actually working like it. For the most part, it seems to be it's still, I think it's still a prototype. They haven't shipped any yet. Right, right. It's not like full, fully available yet or anything, but from the people's videos that have done, you know, on those guns, they have said, this seems to be like the only legit viable smart gun, if you will, compared to yeah. all the other ones of the past, like you were saying with the the magnetic ring and all that other stuff. Like this is the only one that seems to be something. Yeah. I I was intrigued by the BioFire by Ian at Forgotten Weapons video. Mm -hmm. Right. Mm -hmm. And because I'm I'm not me personally, I don't want a smart gun. I don't need a smart gun. Right. I've been shooting my entire life. I'm perfectly comfortable using a mechanical firearm that doesn't have any safeties on it. You know, like the SIG P320 or P365, I should say, I'm carrying right now. It has internal safeties, drop safeties, things like that. But there's no manual safety. This famously, as was said was in gonna, a movie, dude, it was, is my safety. It's like we were reading each other because I was like, oh, this is my safety. <laughs> this is my right? safety. <laughs> Black Hawk down. Yep. But anyway, so I, um, and, and I just don't have a need for it. Mm -hmm. But unlike some of my peers, I'm not ready to poo-poo the technology just yet because here's where we're at in my view. It's going to happen right? We're going to see smart weapons. It doesn't matter if it's gunpowder and metallic cartridges and we get there with smart weapons or if we're talking about laser beams and Star Wars 200 years from now. But smart weapons are going to are going to become a thing. I, I imagine the military is going to use them. I mean, look at all the weapons that Biden left behind in Afghanistan. What if they were all smart weapons and nobody could use them? All right. So you could leave that stuff behind, hastily retreat and not worry about your enemy getting your weapon systems. Right. So there, I can see the military looking at that. I can see civilians like at the gun store. How many times have we seen a, a, a person come in, a first time gun buyer, and their primary concern is safety? Oh, yeah. They don't they know want, much about guns. They want safeties, like not only the manual safety, internal safeties, but Trigger like locks, some kind of lock that can go through there that can be removed quick, like that, covered in safeties. Right. You know what I mean? Because they're scared of what they don't understand. Exactly. Like you and I, we've been around guns our entire lives. They don't scare or intimidate us. No. We just know how to use them. And so for that type of a, an audience, a first time gun buyer, they walks into a gun store and it's like, I've never owned a handgun before. I'm, I'm really nervous about owning one. And you show them a smart gun, they might be inclined to buy that. Now you've gotten them into the Second Amendment community, into the self-defense community, right? You've opened that door by using that technology that puts them at ease. And then hopefully they'll start to use it and maybe at some other time, you know, down the road, they'll start buying other guns. Most people do. They're like potato chips. They have a tendency to multiply. Mm -hmm. 
And so you can't just eat one. <laughs> so I would imagine that just opens a door and gets them into our community and that will make them look at other firearms at some point when they become comfortable with that one. Right. So I don't want to poo poo it because it's going to happen. And I do think it fills a niche market to a degree. Right. This doesn't suit people like us. As I'd imagine, as most folks know, I mean, there's this new AI, all these chat GPTs and all sorts of other things coming out that are doing crazy things. There's even so much AI now that people can create deep fake videos. I mean, not only the sound, but their actions, the face everything there's even people getting phone calls of where they've gotten the recording of like a family member's voice yeah. somehow and i know the they, story you're talking about yeah. right they do like a distress call and they you know pay a ransom and it was all ai generated Baked. Yep. and so ai is going to be is getting pretty scary and they really need to get control of this you know what i mean but that's where the smart gun stuff's going to come in ai right and so as we know ai artificial intelligence and it, it is, it's all, you think of Terminator, right? Where they've lost entire control, it's become its own thing, and now it realizes humans need to go type of thing in order for its own survival. You could have these guns, these smart guns. Oh, they're powered by AI, and everything is going great, and then AI could shut them off one day. Yeah. You know what I mean? And that's, that's one of the things that I don't like about these smart guns is they're selling you on the fact it gives you full control of your weapon for you and you alone, right? But as we know, like... I could be in a different room and somebody breaks into the home and my wife's over there and, you know, get the gun or whatever it is. And she gets it and she can't do anything with it because it's programmed to me. Well, okay, we'll, we'll multi-user program in there. Okay. But you can. Right. So then you got multi-user programming maybe that takes place. But then you also got people that know how to get in the back door, if you will, and unlock the potential of the gun and make it, you know, unsafe anymore or whatever it is in, the, in their eyes and, and use it. Or whatever, there's, like different softwares or sure. I mean, there's all sorts of what if scenarios. Oh my god! Right. It's so if it's electronic, million. it can be interfered with, especially in a military setting. Right. States will spend a lot of money, like we bring down drones with little exactly. anti drone interference. Guns. Yeah. So what if a criminal learns how to short out your AI gun just by something they're wearing on their person when they invade your home? I mean, you can what if this to death. Oh my god! Yes. But the, the minute, I guess th- there's a few things that that would bother me. So right now, like the BioFire, it's not network capable that I'm aware of. It's not like on a cellular network talking to the mothership, right? But that will come. Oh, absolutely. Right? Because they'll do software updates over the air like my car does. Right? Just like I'm sitting in my, my car sitting in the garage. It's on my Wi-Fi network. I'll, I'll start up my car in the morning and it'll say, you know, don't turn the car off. It's updating the computer. It's, it's, it's downloading information from the mothership, updating the computer in my car. Well, I can imagine that they're going to see that as a feature on future firearms. And now you have the ability to talk to the gun. Now, what if the government decides, oh, you know, we have a situation like in France, we have a bunch of civil unrest, like we just came out of with, you know, the COVID stuff, the pandemic. And they go, you know what? We're just shutting all the guns down because we don't want them in the the city of Chicago today. We're just shutting them all down and flip a switch, a kill switch, and they're all shut off. I mean, I can see that happening as well. And I can see that being a problem. And I can see why the 2A community is concerned by it. Yes. Right. As long as they don't take away my mechanical gun. You can play with your technology all you want, but there are states that passed laws, trigger laws, no pun intended, years ago that when a commercially viable smart gun hits the market, then all guns sold in that state must be smart guns. Oh, yeah. See, that, that's the danger of this, right? I don't see the technology as it sets right now being the true danger. I see it as being a sales tool to a certain group of people that are new to the community. But boy, I can certainly see how they can go south quickly. Oh, absolutely. And everything always does. Everything always does. Yeah. There's always a counter to every everything out there. Everything. It doesn't matter what it is. You do this, there's a counter to it. You do this, there's a counter to it. I Especially mean, Especially when you get into drones, electronics. Yep. Drones started very free. Very like you could fly the things anywhere, do whatever you want. Now the thing has to talk to the mothership before you can mm-hmm. even fly it. And it's limiting you and where geofencing it knows oh where it's at you God. can't fly over this altitude you yep. can't fly over this area this is restricted airspace you got to get a license if you put the video on the internet yep. blah, blah 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 yes that's where this will go yeah, absolutely. because with that technology will come regulation the government's going to love this technology they're going to request changes they're going to want changes made to things that they may order themselves mm-hmm. but then politicians are going to pass laws and say well hey you know that smart technology you put in those military weapons we need to push that down to the civilian sector you know, the gun will talk to the mothership, as you said, and that does bother me. Yep. Right. But again, 
as we stand right now, I'm interested in the technology. I want to see, because it's going to happen. I want to see where it's going, but I don't want it to open the door to future restrictions. Right. And, I mean, and forcing this technology on me, because that's where I'm going to have a serious problem with it. Oh, absolutely. That, well, that's always the problem. Everything's always got to be forced down everybody's throats. Absolutely. In, in this political climate, that's a very real concern. Oh, yeah. Everything. Everything's forced down your throat. There are some positives to this gun that, you know, if you I think agree. about it, right? Like, yep. obviously, we watch videos of police officers dealing with a, a suspect who's going for their gun. I just watched a video and, that in a gas station, a guy, an officer pulled over a guy in a, a stolen U-Haul mm -hmm. and that they fought over his gun. Yep. They were fighting over the gun. Now, in that case, if he had a smart gun that had the, those capabilities, if the criminal got a hold of the gun, it wouldn't work for him. You know what I mean? Right. So there's that type of benefit where it could potentially help and save that. Yeah, I can see law life. enforcement military being interested in this. Mm -hmm. But keep in mind, with electronics, they can be interfered with. I know. Well, and that's what when, we're talking about. Is when these guns are available on the commercial market, you can get one if you're a criminal, highly intelligent criminal. Is that an oxymoron? And then you can figure out the, a way to interfere with the operation of that firearm. Oh, yeah. I mean, you got to figure, you know, with the, the age of 3D printing continuing to evolve, you know, now you've got folks that make firearms off of those like 3D printers and you got little computers that you can buy. And we all know there's programmers behind those computers that program them to work. You start combining the two. There's going to be a criminal network of this and there's going to be a, <laughs> you know, a good network of this. And there's going to be the us you know, the regular good old gun owner, if you will. And they're going to try to trap us because I'll, you know, as we know, we're always the problem, mm -hmm. not the criminals. Yeah. We are the problem. Um, and so there's going to be so many different elements of this. This is going to go so many different directions, but it is. I, I am It'll be interesting to see. definitely worried about AI. I'm definitely worried about, you know, obviously smart gun technology, because like you say, states will see that and they'll be like, Ooh, we need to pass some laws and make this force this on the people favor, you know and that's and, a problem and, exactly yeah. because always there always has to be somebody to impose their will on others even if they don't want it i mean we look at every state and just about every state is controlled by the major population center always mm -hmm. the state of illinois we travel through that state all the time traveling and we look and it's just like it's just like home just like home. Downstate is very much like Indiana, downstate yeah. Illinois. It's you, it's very conservative, pro-gun, a lot of hunt, you know, hunting and all that stuff going on down there. It's when you get up in the northern part of the state around the suburbs of Chicago and Chicago itself. Right. That's where all the, the far left anti-gun stuff comes into play. Yep. And they do. They run the politics for the they entire state. They impose their will on the entire state based yep. off of one population center. And so, and it drives me crazy that this stuff takes place all across the United States. You know, one thing I was thinking about, EMPs, you know, the prepper community, they're definitely not going to want anything to do with this because oh yeah, a, an EMP that shorts out stuff if they don't have shielding in these firearms, even in the military setting, they're going to have to have some sort of an EMP shielding. Um, it's very true. You know, it's just so many. Fry your entire military small arms, if you will. Because yeah. we continue to push technology into, and we did a video talking about future guns, right? Because we we have kind of reached the max evolution of gunpowder and projectiles mm -hmm. and all that stuff. I mean, we talked about the new military program and the future of that is the high pressure cartridges. So that way the velocities can be achieved out of shorter and smaller package firearms. Uh, so that's, an, a, a, you know, I think the maxed out evolution of the cartridge, if you will. So there's only one way to go and that could be to electronic weapons, which they have most certainly built rail guns and all sorts of other things that are electronic. And so, it is interesting to see that this is going to trickle down into small arms and how many people are going to play the control yeah. <laughs> on all this is going to be. You know, one thing I was thinking about, see. it's like I, I use red dot sights on my carry guns, have for a while. And every once in a while, not very often, I'll go to pick up my carry gun. I always check it when I put it on and I'll realize the dot's dead. Right? Mm -hmm. Got to throw a battery in the dot. It's no big deal because most of my carry guns, I can still sight just fine through the sight. I don't need the sight working for it to be effective as a self-defense gun. So if it dies while it's on me, the battery dies, I, I don't have to you know, worry about being completely defenseless. But what if that battery, I don't know how, how long the charge is on the biofire, I don't recall. But if you got to ch swap batteries or charge it regularly, I can see that becoming a problem. Yeah. Because as far as I know, there's no way to fire the gun unless it IDs you. Yep. So there's not like some emergency bypass. And even if there were, it would have to probably take some sort of complex system. So it's not easily done right. and not known to everybody that would enable the gun, which in a life or death situation, just having an unloaded gun can get you killed. 
yep. even though it only takes a fraction of a second to potentially load it. But there's all sorts of things that can go wrong. Mm -hmm. You know, same thing with if you had some sort of an emergency code to enable your smart gun that was disabled. Uh, it'd have to be something mechanical because if it's disabled because it had no power, then that's obviously not going to work. There's just so many questions it brings up. And I don't think battery technology is where it should be right now. I mean, so the first generation guns we're going to see today, like the BioFire, are going to be interesting, fun to play with, practical to a certain market segment, but widely practical. I don't see that being the case. We're going to have to go several generations. Battery technology is going to have to come along quite a ways. Um, just the security and the, you know, the stability of those systems, All right. the software systems and the, you know everything. I can just see them having problems. What happens if you dunk them underwater? What happens if you smash them against the ground, if you get thrown to the ground? What if, what if, what if, what if? Right. Right. These are all things we're going to try to find out because I put money down on a biofire right after I watched Ian's video. I went to the website in order to flat dark earth one, but they're just doing pre-orders right now. Right. Yeah. But they're not inexpensive. They're going to be 12 to 1500 bucks, depending on how you option the thing. And I don't know about the reliability, right? Because we haven't seen a production item yet. I've, I've seen the pre-production guns in videos and they had a few hiccups from what I've seen but they weren't production ready yet. So I know they're still working on them. Good Lord, gauntlet coming soon, right? Yeah, what happens in the gauntlet with one of those? <laughs> but um, again, I'm not ready to poo-poo it just because I'm a technology geek. I like technology just because I'm interested in it. Like I saw an article about flying cars. One just got approved for trials by the FAA. I noticed that. And I'm like, oh yes, you know, I want one. I want to live long enough to, to own a flying car, right? That would be cool. Or it's affordable, you know, it doesn't, Take a millionaire to own one and it, it, it would be awesome so technology has always been of interest to me i still play video games at my age i still love playing with computers anything that's new right i'm all there the latest iphone gotta have it latest apple watch gotta have it you know what i mean so yeah it's piqued my interest but i want to assess it i want to see where this technology is going and we in the second amendment community those of us that are politically active are going to have to be on top of this. And that's why we're going to report back on it and talk about it. Because if we see problems that can be exploited by those that oppose us politically, then we have to call that out. And we got to get our politicians to protect us. Mm -hmm. Right? So my interest in, this, interest in them is multifaceted. Interest in the technology, interest in the legal ramifications, interest to see where all this goes and what we can do as a community to make sure if the, when this technology is rolled out, that's done so in a way that benefits us and doesn't become a problem. Oh, yeah. People need to keep their eyes open because as we know, they could pass laws about stuff that's not necessarily on the radar even yet. Mm -hmm. Just kind of like- well, it's just like those know, silly trigger laws. Right. The, the future, if you will. They're like preparing to make it illegal before they even know what it is type of thing. Yeah. Pre-crime. It's like, we don't know what this technology is going to be. We just know that this technology is coming. Therefore, we're passing this law today to regulate this technology that doesn't exist yet. Right. Is what they've done. And that's the danger. Yep. Right. And but so, that's not a fault of the firearm itself or the people developing it. That's just a fault of our political system and the people that want to disarm everybody. Oh, absolutely. So keep so, an eye on, on that stuff. Yep. And it's like you were talking about with batteries. Batteries do degrade. You know, mm -hmm. I remember the the Chevy Volt. You know what I mean? That was a battery operated car. They had a little four cylinder I engine in it that would. You had your little. If your battery died, you had the the little engine there that could, if you will, to keep <laughs> you going. But anyway, the battery on it degraded rather quickly. They're like, oh yeah, to replace the battery, you'd have to like basically buy the yeah, car. Yeah, total the car. It's you just like the I mean? Teslas. It costs right. like thirty, forty thousand dollars to rebattery them, and they're only good for like eight years. Yeah, they have no resale value. And, yeah, it, and that was exactly it. Nobody, when I tried to trade the car, nobody wanted it. No, like I could cost more to, to give it away. Yeah, it costs more to fix it and get it running right. Right, than it's worth. It's and total. So it totaled thing, itself. The thing degraded essentially. Yeah, it degraded itself to no value. The battery would hold half a charge like it used to, and then the motor would just scream. Like you would hear this thing scream at high RPMs, trying to build enough energy with that electric generator to to drive the car. So that's another interesting aspect to the uh, the smart guns is the fact that the technology is going to change. So the gun you buy today in five years is going to be wildly obsolete. Exactly. In terms of technology, right? So, Reliability. Exactly. And, and, and everything else. It's, it's going to evolve very quickly. And it's just like those DGI drones. That is the most annoying company on the face of the planet. Yeah. Because you buy one of their $2,000 drone kits. And then two years later, when they change models, they don't support it. Software wise, battery wise, they just dump it. You, you got this $2,000 brick and they want you to go buy another one. Yep. And so I can see that happening with all these companies that are going to race to fill this vacuum of, of you know, of people wanting smart guns. You're going to have all sorts of companies, good and bad. That are going to do all sorts of crazy stuff, and um, yeah, I just, I, I just don't know 
how that's going to play out. Like that's, you're going to spend a thousand dollars on a handgun that in five years is going to be completely obsolete. The batteries, if they're internal, could be bad. And if they're user swappable batteries, which they probably are, then you just got to make sure that the company still manufactures the batteries because if they change the battery types or the battery yeah. technology changes in five years, now you got a gun you can't get a battery for. It kind of like that that uh, that gun that we were playing with the. Uh, the one that fires itself, uh, tracking point. Yeah. Can't get the batteries for it anymore. No. Great $8,000 rifle, but those batteries aren't made anymore and the batteries go bad. Right. Batteries <laughs> so degrade gotta... and go bad over time. And that's kind of like what I was saying is what, I, you know, you buy this really expensive electric car thinking you got this latest and greatest thing, but then as years progress, it's worth nothing. Where we look at our mechanical guns, some mechanical guns go up in value because of how rare or how few were made or, or they're customized by a known, that stuff. A known like, person. Right? Yeah. So when somebody buys it, they have like a heirloom piece, if you will. They have something they can pass down where these things are going to be almost like throwaway. Like blocks. You know, <laughs> <laughs> like what you. Oh, I had to go there. <laughs> Jesus is thrown out. <laughs> no, but you're going to end up having to take this thing and be like, oh, it's wore out. It's done. Throw it in the trash. Like it's it's waste. Maybe they'll do an upgrade wasteful, program. Wasteful. Right. So you know the, what I the mean? companies can do right. Right, because technology changes very quickly, right? I couldn't imagine being stuck with a 20-year-old PC, right? So a 20-year-old smart gun is probably going to be the same thing. It's not something like an heirloom piece like you're talking about. Right. Maybe these companies can do upgrade programs, right? As long as you stay loyal to us, you keep buying our guns, we'll refurbish them. We'll take them back in. We'll give you kind of like what Apple does when they buy back their old phones and computers and stuff, Right. I, I see this basically becoming its own giant ball of floating garbage in the ocean is what I'm saying. Like, <laughs> I don't know if I'll go that far. Right. <laughs> basically, there's going to in the ocean <laughs> right. with otters with, you know, with their head to the tree right. guard. <laughs> right. So that's what I'm saying. Like, they're going to uh, dispose of these things somehow, somewhere throughout the world. You know what I mean? Like, oh, they're all wore out batteries or whatever it is. Because right now, I, I remember looking at an article and, and this garbage company is like, please don't put lithium batteries in the garbage because they could blow up and all this other stuff. And I'm like, do you know how many people chuck batteries in the garbage? Like, no matter how big, like car battery, just huck it in the trash. You know <laughs> yeah. what I mean? Like, so that's the thing with these guns. Once they like degrade and they can't be used supposedly by anybody else, like they're just going to chuck the thing and it's worthless and go yeah, buy I'll another smash one. Them up. You know? I mean, but, we, we live in the age of plastics, man, you know, 3D printing and plastics. And, but as we know with the ATF, everything is serialized and it's specific to that gun. Could you yeah, imagine? If it now creates a nightmare for them, exactly. good. Good. Now there's That's a reason to go buy one. Massive serial <laughs> number, you know, evolution constantly changing and the paperwork involved of destruction of that firearm and the production of that firearm is going to Anything that causes the ATF grief, I'm all for. You know what I mean? By two of them. What I'm saying is it's going to be quite interesting as time progresses with these guns. There's so many things to think about. Because I remember, again, with the Volt, they're like, oh, my God, you get a tax credit and all this other stuff. And and I remember And we're going to take that away because you're not paying enough in taxes on gas. (laughs) Indiana, for license plates, charges you more for your electric vehicle because you're not using as much gas as the other guy. And that's how they get the tax (laughs) revenue to keep the roads up. You can't make this stuff up, dude. So you buy this electric car to to make, you know, I'm green and all this other stuff. I'm I'm helping, right, that that meme. And, uh, And they tax you more because you're... Well, that's great that you got the electric car, but you're not buying as much gas. So we're not getting that tax revenue, so you got to pay more. Yeah. It's all a scheme. Makes sense. Governments <laughs> don't care about anything but money no, no. and power. But anyway, yeah, it's going to be interesting to see how this plays out, folks. If you guys have questions or comments about smart weapons, I want to see those comments down below because perhaps there's another video in there somewhere, right? Because there's probably a lot of things that we overlooked in today's video. Oh, I'm sure. There's probably a ton of things. Because again, like you said, you could what if this to death. Yeah. I mean, there is so many avenues of what ifs on smart guns, and a lot of them most certainly are probably true. But I find it really, really intriguing, really interesting, and I'm looking forward to playing with the technology just because I'm a geek like that. Mm -hmm. So we'll see, and we'll report back. I look forward to hopefully going out and visiting the folks at BioFire. I have my gun on order, and I just want to see... You know, when I get that thing, hopefully it's sometime soon because I did get it in flat, dark earth. I can't wait to. Call it's going it to be fun to play with. Drop it in the water and <laughs> like blow so. <laughs> so I don't just, know if I'm going to do that. I'm just kidding. I'm just kidding. I'll have a lot of money tied up in this thing. I don't want to just destroy it. <laughs> I'm just. But kidding. we'll play with it. We'll see. I'm sure as time goes on, we'll get a little bit more. You know rowdy with them. We'll, right. We'll see how this plays. Because you know, but, like remember the Samsung phone that you couldn't bring on the plane. Yes. Because like that, it was like it a, would burst into flames. Burst into flames, like. Uh, 
Anyway. <laughs> they won't let you on the plane with your gun anyway, Jay. So anyway. Not that. Not that. <laughs> All right. Guys, we look forward to the comments down below. If you'd like to become part of our Patreon family, there's a link to Patreon down below. Also right here on YouTube, you got the ability to hit the little join button or the thanks button underneath the video player you're watching right now. Mash either one of those. You can help support us right here on YouTube in the age of demonetization. Thank you for 15 years of support. Swing by, check out Copper Custom, and we'll talk to you guys soon. Take care, guys.